NASA's biggest accomplishment is still putting 12 people on the moon. Astronauts picked up rocks, took pictures of them, did tests, put up flags, and then went home. But their trips to the moon as part of the Apollo program did not lead to a lasting human presence there. There are many reasons to send people back to Earth's big, dusty satellite and let them stay there for a long time. The last crewed journey to the moon was Apollo 17, which took place in December 1972. NASA has promised that U.S. humans will go back to the moon soon, maybe as early as 2025. So why haven't we gone back to the moon? Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein, who was in charge of the agency during the Trump administration, said that it's not because the U.S. doesn't have enough science or technology. We would be on the moon right now if it weren't for the political risk, Bridenstine told reporters in a phone call in 2018. In fact, we'd probably be on Mars. So why haven't people been back to the moon in the last 50 years? Bridenstine said the political risks were what stopped it from happening. It took too long and cost too much for the program to work. Scientists and business people have been pushing for a long time for a manned base to be built on the moon. This would be called a lunar space station. The next step that makes sense is to set up a permanent study station on the moon. In three days, it will be here. We can afford to get it wrong and not kill everyone. Former astronaut Chris Hadfield told Business Insider in the past. And there are a lot of things that we need to make and test to learn before we can go farther out. A lunar colony could become a fuel depot for deep space flights, lead to the creation of amazing space telescopes, make life easier on Mars, and answer long-standing science questions about how the Earth and the Moon were made. It could even start a strong business off-world maybe based on tourism to the moon. But many scientists and other experts think that the most important problems that keep us from sending more people to the moon are boring and sad. Getting to the moon costs money, but not so much that it's impossible. The high cost of rocket programs, especially ones that send people into space, have always been a problem. In 2022, NASA had a budget of $24 billion and the Biden administration asked Congress to raise it to about $26 billion for 2023. Those numbers may seem like a windfall, but they are spread out among all of the agency's divisions and ambitious projects, like the James Webb Space Telescope and the Space Launch System (SLS), a huge rocket project, as well as missions to the Sun, Jupiter, Mars, the Asteroid Belt, the Kuiper Belt, and the edge of the Solar System. On the other hand, the U.S. military is on track to have a budget of $858 billion in 2023. Also, NASA has a small budget compared to what its peers had. NASA said in 2005 that going back to the moon would cost about $104 billion, or $162 billion when adjusted for inflation. The Apollo program cost about $142 billion in today's money. Cunningham stated that manned exploration is the most expensive space project and, as a result, the hardest to get political support for. He told Scientific American, This is just talk until the country, which in this case is Congress, decides to put more money into it. NASA's budget is way too low to do all of the things we've talked about, Cunningham said about trips to Mars and a return to the moon. Why politics is a problem here? Former U.S. President Donald Trump wanted humans to go back to the moon by 2024. When NASA puts people back on the moon in 2025 or later, President Biden may or may not still be in office. And this is where another important problem comes in – political whiplash. Why would you believe anything a president said about predicting something that would happen two administrations later? The time it takes to design, build, and test a spaceship that can take people to another planet is easily longer than a two-term presidency. But new presidents and lawmakers often give up on the space exploration goals of the previous government. In January 2016, before President Trump took office, Scott Kelly, an astronaut who spent a year in space, wrote in a Reddit Ask Me Anything thread, I would like the next president to support a budget that allows us to complete the mission that we were asked to perform, whatever that mission may be. 
but leaders of Congress don't always seem to care about staying on the same path. In 2004, for example, the Bush government told NASA to come up with a plan to replace the space shuttle, which was going to be retired and go back to the moon. The Constellation program was made by the government to send people to the moon with the help of an Ares rocket and an Orion spaceship. Over a period of five years, NASA spent $9 billion planning, building, and testing the equipment for that trip. But when President Barack Obama took office and the Government Accountability Office released a report about how NASA had not been able to predict how much Constellation would cost, Obama tried to stop the program and instead approved the SLS rocket. Trump didn't just give up on SLS. He did, however, change Obama's plan to send people to an asteroid. Instead, he put more attention on trips to the Moon and Mars. Trump hoped that Artemis would send people to the moon again in 2024. NASA's expensive goals have changed over and over, which has caused cancellation after cancellation, a $20 billion loss, and years of lost time and progress. Biden seems to be the only president who doesn't follow the changing trend. He hasn't changed Trump's top goal for NASA, Artemis, and he's kept the Space Force. The government's promise to go back to the moon is really driven by the will of the American people who vote for lawmakers and help set their goals. But the public's interest in exploring the moon has been at best lukewarm. Even after Aldrin and Neil Armstrong arrived on the moon as part of the Apollo program, when it was at its peak, only 53% of Americans thought it was all worth it. The rest of the time, less than 50% of the people in the U.S. liked Apollo. Should NASA visit the moon again? Most Americans think that going back to the moon should be one of NASA's most important goals right now. A December 2018 insider poll found that more than 57% of people across the country think it's important for NASA to go back to the moon, but only about 38% think that live, breathing humans should go there. Some people who want the U.S. to go to the moon say that exploring could be done by robots. Crude exploration of Mars is becoming more popular. In a 2018 Pew Research Center poll, 63% of people said that it should be a top goal for NASA. Also, 91% think that it's important to watch the sky for dangerous objects. No one has gone to the moon because of more than just a fight over NASA's mission and money. The moon is also a death trap for people that have been there for 4.5 billion years and should not be ignored or played with. The surface is full of holes and rocks, making it hard to land safely. Before the first moon landing in 1969, the U.S. government spent billions of dollars building, launching, and sending satellites to the moon to map its surface and help mission planners look for possible Apollo landing sites. A bigger worry is the regolith, or moon dust, that has been made by meteorites hitting the moon for a long time. Madhu Thangavalu, an aeronautical engineer at the University of Southern California, says that the moon has a fine, talc-like top layer of lunar dust that is several inches thick in some places. The dust is charged by the solar wind and is very rough and sticky, so it quickly messes up spacesuits, vehicles, and systems. Peggy Whitson, who was in space for 665 days, told Business Insider that the Apollo missions had a lot of problems with dust. Whitson said, if we're going to stay for a long time and build permanent homes, we need to figure out how to deal with that. Sunlight is another problem. The surface of the moon is a boiling hellscape because it is directly hit by the sun for about 14 days at a time. The moon has no atmosphere to protect it. Due to total darkness, the moon's surface will be one of the coldest places in the universe for the next 14 days. Thanks for watching this video.